Now it's time to look at the Punnett square of a dihybrid cross. And I'm going to continue using Mendel's plants that were big P over big P and big L over big L, which was purple flowers and long pollen grains. And if we cross that individual, as we did in the previous video, to a pure breeding individual with the recessive alleles, which is red flowers and short pollen grains, we make an F1. That's a dihybrid. It's heterozygous at both loci. And what we want to do now is look at, this by the way was how we defined dominance. This was a purple flowered, long pollen grained plant. And if we perform a dihybrid cross, crossing two dihybrids, two heterozygotes at two loci together, we're going to generate gametes of particular types. There are going to be four gametes produced by each of these parents. The parents have the same genotypes. So we'll have big P's with big L's. We'll have big P's with little L's. We'll have little P's with big L's and little P's with little L's. And this was all part of Mendel's second law independent assortment that we saw earlier. Now, what I want to do next is to set up the Punnett square to represent this cross. So we've already written out the gametes of one parent on one axis of the Punnett square. And now we can write out the same over here. And then what we do, as always, is fill across and down to fill in the Punnett square. So here are all of the different genotypes that are produced by this cross. We've got four different haplotypes from each parent and the different genotypes they'll create in combinations. And one of the things that we should do is to look at both the genotypes that are produced and also now we know how the genotypes relate to the phenotypes or the traits that these organisms will have. So for example, every time we want a purple plant that has long pollen, because we know that capital P and capital L are dominant, that any individual with a one capital letter, P over anything, and capital L over anything, will have the purple and long phenotype. Likewise, there are particular genotypes that will make purple flowers with short pollen. Again, that's purple over anything, big P over anything. But if you're going to have a short pollen, we know that that only happens when you're little l over little l. Likewise, if we want red flowers with long pollen, that will be little p over little p. That's the only genotype that makes red flowers. But long pollen could be one dominant allele over anything, either a capital L or a lowercase l. And if we want red short, that will be only one type of genotype. So we have four different types of phenotype combinations that we can produce from this cross. And what I'd encourage you to do now is to look through this entire table and figure out how many of these genotypes and those genotypes and those and those, there are four different types of genotypes, how many of those phenotypes are there? How many P over anything, capital L over anything, do we have? So every row that has a capital P in it is going to produce an individual that has at least one capital P, and every column likewise. So these three quadrants of this Punnett square have 
a capital P in them. So those are going to produce purple plants. And you could look separately at what happens when you have a capital L. And every column and every row that had a capital L will have a capital L in the genotype. And so again, we find that there are nine of these squares that have long pollen. Some of those, we're going to have a green dot and a pink dot, will have both the purple and the long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what we're doing now is we're looking at a phenotype ratio. So there are nine of the 16 possible combinations that are purple and long. There are also three, three, and one. That would be purple with short, red with long, and each of those you'll notice are combinations where there's one dominant trait and one recessive trait. And then the very rarest phenotypic combination, red flowers with short pollen, is only one square down there in the bottom right hand corner where we have a homozygote for both recessive alleles. Now that's the phenotype ratio, 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. That's the expected ratio of the output of a dihybrid cross. We could also look at the genotype ratio, and I'm going to ask you to do this on your own. Tabulate how many different genotypes are there among these 16 squares, and what ratio are they in?